Yeah, hi guys. So let's, let's look at this question here. It's a good, good question. A very good concept actually. So we'll be seeing uh, two methods to solve this question, and both the methods are important. Uh, you should learn both the method methods, right? Okay. The question says that how many pairs of integers are there such that twice the sum of the integers is equal to the product? Fine. So first of all, you understand that uh, if you assume any variable here, let's say let's say I assume that my in, my integers here are okay. So I'll assume my integers here are a and b. So I can write my equation as a plus b. Sorry, twice, है ना? So I can write my equation as twice of a plus b is equal to a b, है ना? So twice the sum of the integers is equal to their product. So twice into a plus b equal to a b, right? That will eventually become two a plus two b is equal to a b, right? So you understand that this what we have done actually we have assumed variables a and b here. Okay, so a and b are my assumed variables here. So assumed variables means I am looking for unordered solutions. Unordered solution because the question doesn't contain variables. So questions uh, variables are not defined in the question, right? So I am looking for unordered solution means what do you mean by unordered solution means if if we have x comma y is two comma three, so two comma three or three comma two. It is counted as only one solution. Okay, whereas in ordered solution, if I write x comma y as two comma three, then it is also can three comma two, and then it will be counted as two solutions here, right? So I taught earlier also when variables are defined in the question, it's a case of ordered solution. Okay, that means they are treating x and y or a and b as different variables. But when I assume this a and b as variables, that means I am not supposed to interchange both the value. I can say, okay, a and b are my assumed variables, and then a will be two, b will be four, and a will be four, b will be two. That we are doing hypothetically, right? That is that is not correct, right? So that's why, if we assume variables, that means variables are not defined in the question. That's a case of unordered unordered solution. So we should not change the order. Two comma three or three comma two is counted as only one solution. Fine. Okay. So now let's look at method one to solve this question here. Okay. So look at method one to solve this question. Now. So we have this 2a plus 2b is equal to ab. So I can write 2a is equal to a minus 2 into b, and I can write b is equal to some 2a upon a minus 2. Okay. So again, this is a standard form in algebra or in number system. Okay, where we have some uh, variable uh, in denominator here. Okay, so we have got some variable in denominator that is a minus 2, है ना? That is a here and In numerator also we have a. So in this we are trying to write this in the form of any constant, right? That means numerator should not should not contain this a. So I want to remove this a here. How how I can remove this a here? So we have a minus two in denominator. So if I if I am able to bring some a minus two in numerator also, okay? So I can cancel that part. So how can I bring how can I bring a minus two in numerator? So we have only one two here, right? So I need to bring a minus two in numerator. So two into two is four. So that means I need to subtract four here. Okay. So if I need to subtract four, then I'll, then I'll add four also. Okay. So let's subtract four, and then let's add four here. Now what does this become here? So it actually it's I can see that this will be equal to what? So b will be equal to two uh, a minus four. I can take a uh, two common. That will be a minus two plus four upon A minus two. I can further write as b is equal to now two. This will get cancelled. So two plus four upon a minus two. Correct? No. Now I know that a and b are integers. So for b to be for b to be integer, this four upon a minus two should be an integer, है ना? So for four upon a minus two be an integer, a minus two should be factor of four. Okay. And factor uh, are natural factors are natural numbers, but also in this condition I can also bring in a negative sign also because these are only integers, right? So what about the factors of four here? So I can I can write my a minus two here as so my a minus two will be equal to what? So a minus two can be equal to uh, the factors of four here. It can be one. A minus two can be two. A minus two can be four. Okay. So also a minus two can be now all the negatives and also it can be minus one, it can be minus two, it can be minus four, correct? So correspondingly, I'll get the value of a here. So what is the value of a now? So a minus two is one, so a equal to three. A minus two is two, so a equal to four. A minus two is four, so a is equal to six. 
a minus 2 is minus 1, so a equal to 1, a minus 2 is minus 2, so a is 0, and a minus 2 is minus 4, so a is equal to 2, a is equal to, uh, yeah, minus, a minus 2 is minus 4, now. so a will be equal to minus 2, that's the condition here, fine. Now, if I get the, this, these are the values of a, so I can get the value of b also, so in this equation, I'll be putting the value of a, no, so like we have this 4 upon a minus 2, the first is a3. So here, if I put a3, what is the value of b now? 2 plus 4 upon 3 minus 2. So 2 plus 4 upon 3 minus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1 and 2 plus 4 is 6. That means at a equal to 3, I'll be getting b equal to 6. Correct. So at a equal to 3, I'll be getting b equal to 6. Similarly, I'll get all the values here. Okay, so let's write all the values now. So corresponding values here. Okay. So if I see here at a equal to 3, b equal to 6, at a equal to 4, we'll be getting b equal to 4. At a equal to 6, I'll be getting 4 upon 4 is 1. So this is 3. At a equal to 1, 4 upon is minus, uh, at a equal to 1, uh, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So 2 plus 4 by minus 1 is 2 minus 4, that is minus 2. So that is minus 2. Now at a equal to 0, it also becomes 0 because uh, 2 minus 2 will become 0 and at a equal to minus 2, okay, I'll be getting 1 here, okay. So now I told that initially only you know, that we are looking for only unordered solution, right? So that means 3 comma 6, if I count it as a comma b, if I count, then I should, shouldn't count 6 comma 3 because it's just the change of variable, right? So 3, 6 and 6, 3, both are same things, right? That will get same result. But since because a and b are not defined in the question, we have assumed it. So we are solving for unordered solution means 6, 3 and 3, 6 will not count as two separate pairs. 4, 4 is counted, yes. Similarly, 1, comma minus 2 and minus 2, comma 1 should not be counted. Okay, because both are a similar thing. So any one should be counted, other should be neglected. And then a0 and b0. That basically means that we have got four solutions for this question here. Okay, so 4 is the answer four solutions for this question. Okay. So how many pairs of integers are there? So four is the answer. Four pairs. What are the pairs? You can get the pairs to be a comma b is what? It is like three comma six. Okay. Then it is a four comma four. Then it is uh, one comma minus two. And then it is zero comma zero. So we have got four solutions here. Four pairs. Right. That's the first method to solve this question okay now let's look at method two so method two is also a good method to learn here yeah? okay now in method two you understand that so again uh my part of this much only so i'll be writing here uh two uh, two into a plus b is equal to a b and then i can write here so we have uh this uh, a b minus two a minus two b equal to zero correct now I can take from these two, I am, I am trying to factorize this. I can take here a common, right? So I will become, I, it becomes b minus 2. Now to factorize this further, I have minus 2b here. Anna? And again, I need in bracket, in bracket, I must be needing some b minus 2 here. So b minus 2, if I need something in bracket and minus 2 is already outside, that means minus 2 into minus 2 is 4. That means to bring up b minus 2, I should add 4 here. So if I add 4 both sides, what does what uh, uh, how does this equation changes so i can i can, I can factorize now why because this is a into b minus 2 if from here you take minus 2 common it again becomes b minus 2 right that's that that's what i was trying right so in this equation i was trying to get a minus b minus 2 here okay so now you got it how i got it by adding plus 4 both sides right? and this is equal to 4 so now a minus 2 into b minus 2 will be equal to 4 okay so basically, how many pairs of a and b? So there are how many ways of writing? I can write a as 1 into 4, okay, as a minus 1 into minus 4, as 2 into 2, and as minus 2 into minus 2, okay. So I can say that there are 4, uh, I don't need to calculate the, uh, the values of a and b. I can say that there are 4 pairs here. So corresponding, I'll be getting 4 pairs of values of a and b. So 4 should be the answer. If you want to calculate, you can calculate. Like a minus 2 is 1. So a will be equal to 3, b minus 2 is 4, so b will be equal to 6. Like a minus 2 is minus 1, so a will be equal to uh, 1, b minus 2 is minus 4, so b will be equal to minus 2. So you can see that you're getting all these values, 1 minus 2, 3, 6, 
हाँ लाइक इन द लास्ट फ्लाइट वी गॉट राइट सो लाइक दिस इज हाउ विल गेट फोर सोल्यूशन दैट द आंसर ओके सो गुड क्वेश्चन गाइड अ गुड क्वेश्चन अ गुड कॉन्सेप्ट ओके सो हू विल लर्न समथिंग लेट सॉल्व वन मोर क्वेश्चन यर दिस क्वेश्चन से इज दैट फाइन द लास्ट टू डिजिट्स ऑफ सेवेंटी सिक्स रेस टू एटी फोर ओके सो वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन और ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट विल बी रिवाइज फॉर दिस लास्ट टू डिजिट्स ओके सो लुक एट ऑल दी कॉन्सेप्ट वन बाई वन सो फाइन दी लास्ट टू डिजिट्स ऑफ सेवेंटी सिक्स रेस टू एटी फोर ओके सो ना बेसिकली आई नो दैट दिस दिस इज शॉर्टकट फॉर ऑल दी नंबर्स एंडिंग इन वन ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल any last two digits ending in one there is a shortcut like that right what is the shortcut here the shortcut is for example if we have something like 41 raised to 24 22 so how do we write it so any power of 1 will always end in 1 and then 4 into 2 will become 8 so it is 81 okay so that tens digit here so that tens digit here that is 4 multiplied by the unit digit of power that is 8 so 81 right Similarly, if we have some sixty-one uh, raised to thirty-seven, okay. So any power of one will always end in one, and the tens will be six into seven. So six into seven is forty-two. So last is two. So I'll, I'll take two away. So twenty-one like that. So basically, uh, now this is seventy-six raised to eighty-four here. So now I, I'll just try to break this as. So seventy six can we can break this as something like two uh, square into nineteen raised to eighty four, है ना? Now this is two is this becomes two raised to one sixty eight into nineteen raised to eighty four, correct? Now both can be handled separately. So two raised to sixty eight into nineteen raised to eighty four. Now two raised to what is the pattern for two? So the pattern for two is two raised to ten into any odd power. Will always end in twenty four, है ना? And two raised to ten, any even power will always end in seventy six. Will always end in seventy six, right? Okay. So now can I say that? Uh, yeah. So can I say that now? Basically, so here we have got one sixty eight. So can I break like this? So for two, if I want to calculate for two raised to one sixty eight, so I can do separately, you know. So two raised to one sixty eight, I can write like this: two raised to ten into some even number that is sixteen. So this is one sixty, and eight will be left out. So this is two raised to ten. Ah, uh, that is uh, into any even will always end in seventy six. Seventy six into and two raised to eight. So two raised to eight is basically two fifty six. So its last two digits is fifty six. So I'm concerned with only last two digits. Okay. So seventy six into fifty six will always end in. Fifty six, okay. So seventy six into fifty six will always end in fifty six, right? You can do it manually also, okay. Also, there is a property also that any seventy six is a is a special is a special number here, okay. Multiplied by any power of two, that means any power of two. So for example, if we have two square, that is zero four, okay. So seventy six into zero four ends in three zero four. It's the same last to it, okay. That is zero four. Now seventy six into two cube. That is zero eight. Okay. So seventy six into zero eight is six zero eight. So again, last two is actually zero eight here. So going in this pattern here, so seventy six into two uh, raised to eight is two fifty six. So it will always end in last two is same, right? Zero eight zero eight no zero four zero four. So fifty six and fifty six. So last two will be obviously fifty six. So I can directly say that, right? So this is a peculiar number seventy six. So this is a this is a property actually fine. Okay. So now, uh, what I got here is that uh, hmm, okay. So now I can say that this two raised to one sixty eight is ending in fifty six. So I can put fifty six here. The last two is fifty six. Okay. Now nineteen raised to eighty four. Uh, so let's tackle this one also. Nineteen raised to eighty four. Correct. See. So for nineteen raised to eighty four, what will happen here? So I want to bring it at ending in one year, okay? Because ending in one we have a direct shortcut, right? So I I know that nine is square will end in one, and I know that nine is square will end in one. So I'll just try to bring in this form, right? So what I'll try to do here is I'll try to bring this nineteen raised to eighty four. My aim is to end, make it end in one. So nineteen is square I can write here, and then I can make it forty two here. 
90 square for you to find. That becomes, what is 90 square? It is 361, right? So basically it is 361. So 361 raised to some 42. Okay. So now my aim is, oh, uh, my aim is, uh, we have achieved your aim, right? So what is the part here? That means th this is 361. So 61 raised to 42. So I can just say that what is the last two digits here? So if it is ending in one, so one raised to anything will always end in one and six into two is 12. So 12 last is two. So 21 here. That means this will, this will be ending in 21. So 56 into 21. The last two digits of this is 821, right? I hope you got this, Anna. Okay, so what is the answer now? So 56 into 21, you can do manually. That is uh, 56 into 21 is, uh, is 1120 and 1176. 76 is the answer for this question. Okay. So that's the way to go about it. I hope you got this right. Sorry, 76 now. Uh, yeah, 76, correct. Correct, 76 is the answer, okay.